Welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial, picking up where we left off um, with the architectural visualization, and now we're talking about post-production. Um, so I've rendered out this image, um, and I just chose kind of a lower resolution, um, but this was the result that I got. So apologies on a little bit of the graininess in there. Um, it just has to do with it being a very small resolution just to do this in a little bit more timely fashion. Um, but now what we're going to do, since I, I don't have VFB and it's also I'm more familiar with Photoshop, is we're going to take this into Photoshop and do a little bit more um, editing on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead and dropped this right into Photoshop. Um, and so what you'll notice is um, we have a nice image and we've accomplished what we want with the shadows and the lighting. and. It's not a lot we need to do with the white balance, but um, we just want to take this kind of into the next level of realism. Um, so we want to make sure that we're in the uh, photography view here. And first things first is we're just going to adjust the curves a little bit. So we're going to add some density to the darks and kind of lighten out the higher end of the spectrum there. Um, and that just adds a little bit more sharpness to the uh, overall image and then we can also play with uh, our vibrance vibrance will just kinda really make those colors look more stunning we don't need a ton of that and we definitely don't need a lot of saturation but just a little bit I'm gonna go to like plus six so it just gives it a little bit more pop um, especially you can see it down here in some of those reflections so the next thing you could do is you could add a vignette um, I'm not going to do that in this tutorial, but um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to add um, a little bit more dramatic light because I know the light's coming in from this area over here. So what I'll do is, oops, I jumped out of the wrong program, is inside of Photoshop I'm going to add a new layer. And on this layer we are just going to kind of select along that horizon and just kind of arc out in the sky like that and we'll just do a fill of white um, now what I'm going to do is I'm make sure this is deselected and I'm going to go into my filter blur gallery field blur and I'm just gonna drop my pin right there and I'm gonna turn this way down by clicking on the uh, this radial here to almost where there's none so okay, you can see it just kinda creates this big dome, translucent dome here. Um, and that's what we want to see for now. So click OK. Um, what we're going to do is in the outer glow, we're going to add just kind of like a, a sun color here. Something like that. So we start seeing the, the color change there. Um, you can see the difference between just that white to now more like what the sun's, sunlight would look like. And we're going to leave that and then finally what we're going to do is we're going to change the blending mode to multiply and now what you'll notice is this is kind of just you know a lot of times when you look up in the sky you don't see a clear blue sky you'll see um, you know water vapor or even smoke sometimes just getting some of that warmth from the sun and so now we kind of have that um, washing across our scene here and we can play with the um, the density of that but just giving it a little touch right there um, we'll say you know we'll go to like 50 percent gives it more of a sense that there's a real light coming in from this direction so you can see the difference between the flat image there and that image right there um, so yeah there's a lot of other things that we could do here as well um, but some of those should be controlled inside of Cinema 4D, such as the f-stop, so having some of the foreground elements um, blurred out. Like if I had done my render from over by this beach chair, I might want to make that blurred out so that the uh, focus is on the house or the car behind it. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's just kind of a simple post-production. Um, you know, another, another nice thing if you've got a lot of grain is to, um, you could add a mat to this 
Um, so I don't know what kind of tools you have. I just have default actions, but in my other Photoshop program, um, there's other good ways to create a mat. But since we don't have those actions, what I'll do is I'll just do the same thing by creating a new layer. Um, and inside this layer, we'll just do a curves adjustment. And really all you need to do to create a mat is kind of uh, drop down the high end and lift up, oops, lift up this bottom end a little bit so that it just kind of uh, adds a little bit of a gloss or a matte to it. Um, you can just see the difference there. It just kind of tones it down every, everywhere and, and, and eliminates if you've got a lot of noise. It does a pretty good job of that um, as well. And finally, we can also do a, D, a reduce, reduction of noise. Um, so you'll see this is, this is my live preview here. Um, if I turn my strength way down, there's a lot of noise inside these corners and these walls. If I turn the strength way up, it does clean it up a little bit. Um, but as I said, the resolution is pretty small. But you can see the difference between going from 0 all the way up to, let's say, even 10. Um, there is a lot less noise in this image. So if we go ahead and click OK. Um, you will lose a little bit of sharpness if you do that. It's probably a little bit too extreme. Uh, but anyway, these are just a couple of tips on how to do post-production on your architectural visual visualization um, renders. Uh, stay tuned. We'll, we'll be posting more tutorials just like this. Thanks a lot.